Hey everybody, Jake Bond Performance. Uh, had a question come up on the forums and it was just a lot of information and I thought to myself, well, this would probably be a good opportunity for a YouTube video because I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who have these same questions about their uh, 6MT Mark 7. So here we go. Basically, the OEM clutch in a Mark 7 is a dual mass flywheel, which means there's a inner portion towards the crankshaft that's solid mounted to the crankshaft and that's got a sprung hub that connects it to the outer ring which is actually where the friction material makes contact so it being a dual mass two-part flywheel dampens some of the engine vibration and clutch vibrations to make it a more compliant car for your average uh, drivers not necessarily anything to do with performance in fact it kind of uh, inhibits performance a little bit because that's an extra point of failure and um, it's just not a it's not something that's done for performance reasons at all it's specifically just to make the car quieter inside and uh, easier to sell to the masses so moving back from the engine towards the transmission from that point you've got the flywheel the next part is the friction disc which on a mark 7 and most well as far as i know all factory clutches it's a organic material which is um it's pretty soft material it's basically self-healing in that if you glaze it eventually over time that glazed layer will wear off and the clutch will so somewhat recover from that damage then moving on towards the transmission from that is a pressure plate which is actually bolted to the flywheel and it's got a sprung center section that actually releases the clutch disc so where all three the flywheel the disc and the pressure plate are clamped when the clutch is out when the pressure plate is pushed in by the clutch pedal it releases so those three pieces can spin well, the two pieces on the outside can spin independent of the disc, which is spline driven by the input shaft to the transmission. So now you've got a basic understanding of what you start with and what a clutch does. How do you improve on that? Well, for a very OEM plus modification, there's a TTRS based clutches, which feature just a stiffer pressure plate the disc would still remain the same and these uh, types of kits they have different names for them RSR and uh, things of that nature but they're all TTRS based where just a heavier rated pressure plate is applying the force so you've got extra clamping pressure but that same kind of wishy-washy compliant uh, easy to work with not all that high performance friction material so for just a mild upgrade for someone who isn't going to make big power a TTR based TTRS wow TTRS based clutch is a good popular and cost effective solution because you can retain that factory flywheel as long as it's not damaged and um just replace basically the pressure plate and the disc which uh, th it's hard to put a, a torque rating on things but say for 400 foot pounds of torque or less when treated appropriately that clutch will get you by so then moving forward a single mass flywheel would be a more high performance option but then you're inducing more cabin noise more vibrations more chatter a single mass flywheel is a uh, you know, the original flywheels a hundred years ago up to any performance oriented flywheel today is one piece or single mass. So there's no sprung anything. It's just a solid machined piece of either high carbon steel or aluminum, depending on which one you have. Uh, my car sitting here idling has a single mass flywheel with a DKM twin disc, but that's not what this video is about. This is just the basics of what, why, and how to achieve your goals, and um, I'll even get into what not to do. So, 
next step up would be what they would call a stage one now don't get hung up on stages because clutch ratings and stages are basically just a marketing tool to kind of give you a blanket statement of this is our least aggressive clutch this is our most aggressive clutch it's got absolutely zero correlation with what tune you're going to be able to run and what turbo that clutch will be able to handle so absolutely do not put too much thought into the names so the single mass flywheel alone paired with a heavier pressure plate which they're rated in pounds by the way say a, a 2400 pound pressure plate would be a pretty light one a 3200 pound pressure plate would be a pretty heavy one and uh so those are just ballpark numbers actually volkswagen clutches normally don't even advertise those numbers so again don't get too hung up on numbers here so your friction material just like brakes will determine a lot of your performance capability because a really aggressive say four puck ceramic disc will bite really hard um, but it's not going to be as compliant obviously it's going to be noisier and may not last as long as the kind of self-healing properties of a organic friction disc and then right in the middle between those there's kind of hybrid blends of different materials with uh, Kevlar blends or some ceramic-ish materials mixed with organic-ish so there's a lot of different versions out there you just have to be honest with yourself on how you're going to use the clutch and what your power goals are so moving up from most basic to most high performance you've got dual mass flywheel with TTRS based upgrades single mass flywheel with a single disc clutch and then um, your holding your torque holding ability is going to be determined by how aggressive of a disc and how heavy of a pressure plate you're running and then moving forward from that up to what I've got a twin disc clutch basically doubling your surface area for the friction material to join that torque so while I do have the more mild of the twin disc clutches it is rated for 660 foot pounds of torque now again take that with a grain of salt that's crank torque that's an estimate don't get hung up on that it's considered a stage three clutch but obviously 660 foot pounds is more than enough headroom for basically anything you're going to do it's pretty compliant because it is an organic disc but like I said you've got double the surface area so a heavy pressure plate, lots of surface area because there's two discs and an extra steel plate in between those two discs. So uh, a good option, but obviously there's uh, lots of different routes you can take here. And the biggest thing is being honest with your power goals and how you're gonna use the car. You can make a lightly rated clutch lasts a long time by treating it correctly and you can ruin a highly rated clutch by abusing it so the two most important things with any clutch by far are one proper break in if you don't break in your aftermarket or oem clutch correctly its lifespan and its usable clamping force is going to be extremely deteriorated you're going to run into a lot of issues a uh, typical bed-in procedure for a clutch would be as many engagements and disengagements as you can get over a, say, 500 to 1,000 mile period. So lots of city driving, uh, as little highway driving as you can, and like I said, as many as, engagement, as many engagements as you can get because that helps bed in the friction material and the surfaces that it's mating against the flywheel and the pressure plate. So. You don't want to downshift hard. Well, obviously, if you push in the clutch and downshift to climb a hill, that's all I'm talking about. You don't want to downshift to decelerate the car during this period of time. And you don't want to load up the car. So you don't want to be cruising at 40 and floor it in fourth gear, which we'll get to that. That's the other thing that can hurt the clutch. So basically just drive like your boss or your grandma's in the car during this clutch break in period of time use all six gears and just take it easy no high boost or high loot situations 
you take your time and do that for the first 500 to 1,000 miles, the clutch is going to last a long time and perform its absolute best. So the second thing, and this is the problem that guys like this guy on the forum, he said his car has got 16,000 miles on it and his stock clutch is already failing. Well, being nice to your car can actually be an issue. If you're cruising along in sixth gear and you decide you want to pass somebody and you think you're being nice by just flooring it, you're doing the most abuse to your clutch that you really can other than just deliberately sitting there and slipping it. You need to downshift into proper gear. This is a turbo car that makes a lot of torque. There's never an instance where you should be wide open throttle before 3000 RPM. If you're gonna apply more than say one third throttle, you need to downshift, period. The DSG does it, every automatic transmission does it. Your manual transmission needs to do it too. People that ruin clutches on stock cars at low mileage are lugging the car and the massive torque that these cars make even in stock trim is what will overcome the clamping force and the friction material of the stock clutch and ruin it. So could this guy change his driving habits and prolong the life of this clutch? Absolutely, they're pretty resilient. I drove mine for 49,000 miles, tuned stage one since basically new and the clutch was in such good condition I was able to resell it. And under the pretext that it had that many miles on it, pictures of the clutch tell the tale. There was no heat damage, no warping, uh, no visible damage to be had. It still had the machined cross hatch in the flywheel. So if you're one of those guys that thinks you're, you're being nice to your car by lugging it around, stop it downshift and drive it like it's meant to be driven if you're going to get on the gas hard if you want to pass somebody if you want to accelerate lugging the car is the biggest no-no there is and on the other hand it's not even just the clutch that you're abusing it's the bottom end because making massive boost and torque at a low rpm is extremely hard on the bottom end of the car as well so uh, just an all-around thing to avoid uh, clutches like to be revved out revving it out hard off the pedal is fine it's revving it hard with the pedal partially applied is what's hard of it if you're hard on it if you're slipping the clutch you're burning the clutch if you can smell it it's too late you've already done damage you need to drive the car as it was designed the rev limiter is there for a reason obviously you don't need to rev this car that hard especially with the stock turbo they kind of peter out by 5500 but you know if you want to do a hundred mile an hour pull you don't start out at 50 and fourth fifth or sixth you need to downshift get into the meat of the power and let it do its thing you're not going to hurt it um, rpms are a good thing so uh, i'm going to do a follow-up video on the things that mark 7 owners do to hurt their cars or something along those lines and hit a bunch of stuff um, kind of out of the premises video so stay tuned for that and if you're uh, if you're new to this platform, new to this manual transmission, I hope this video has helped you. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm working my way up to a thousand. I appreciate all the support so far, but still got a ways to go. Thanks for watching, guys.